Now, when I met the Balance View training, I was 38 years old. I'm 50 this year. And I know some of you here are older than that, but to me, it's like, how, how did that happen? How? Like that, I was 20. And when I was 20, being 50 just wasn't ever going to happen. <laughs> but here I am, and the wheels have fallen off, and it's all downhill. <laughs> and, uh, you know, conventionally life is getting much worse. Physical pain, arthritis, all of these things. But yet, why do I feel magnificent and completely at ease? And that's ever increasing. How is that possible? Well, when I came to the training, um, I was 38 and I had 20 years of practices, teachers and teachings and trainings trying to find happiness. And I believed, like everyone, that happiness meant I would experience things that I like. So a gauge of my success in life would be having lots of pleasant thoughts, emotions, sensations and circumstances. If that's happening, it's all okay. So the conventional approach that we're all familiar with is we want to have lots of positive and hold on to it. We have, we, we have lots of negative and we want to modify it and get rid of it. And then we have lots of neutral things that we don't really think about. Now, the, the big problem with that approach is that it doesn't work. You can't have only positive thoughts, emotions and sensations. And like, like you heard in this training, we call that data. Thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things, data. So the conventional game of life is to have more positive data and hold on to it, have less or no negative data. Um, and it doesn't, that approach doesn't work. And the older you get, the pile of negative tends to expand and the pile of positive tends to diminish. That, this is my experience. Um, now... We don't have another approach. That is the only approach we have. So we can't really say, OK, I'm going to try something else. Now, you see, all the other trainings I practiced before, even though they said everything is all one, everything is perfect, there was still a subtle or an overt emphasis on things do need to change. I do need to purify myself somehow. Like the ego needs to get, I need to get rid of that, then I can recognize the nature of reality. But if everyone, everything is an indivisible expanse, if everything is an indivisible expanse, then that means everything is evidence of that indivisibility. You can't, you can't have something that isn't evidence of that. It just logically doesn't make sense. So sexual desire, hatred, anger, violence, rape, disease, war, these two must be evidence of that natural perfection. It can't be any other way. Now, our intellect can't, can't get, up, get, get, get around that. It, it, it doesn't compute. How can violence be evidence of natural perfection or whatever you want to call it? Oneness. See, we, we, don't, we don't use these terms in, in balanced view because they're subject to such intellectual interpretation you just get lost in the descriptions, which is why the introduction to the experience of open intelligence is so important. So we can just do that again. If you stop thinking now, stop thinking, what do you notice? Immediately a thought will come back or a sound or maybe if you're like me, the feeling of being hot and sweaty just, will just come up. But stop thinking, stop describing. There's an undeniable alertness and openness in your experience. You don't have to think about it. It doesn't need describing. It's easy to experience. And what we're doing here is so simple. You either recognise open intelligence or you don't. The politicians around the world who, who, who stand for so-called values and the things that are going on, it hasn't changed and it won't change. The world is, is a disaster. It's a complete disaster. Um, you can actually look, go on YouTube and you can look at the news from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's exactly the same. Am I watching today's news programme? Just propaganda, relentless propaganda.
propaganda. And I'm not saying that this, these things aren't happening because they obviously are. But we have not changed as human beings for thousands of years. And the great power of this training is, in your experience, you have been now introduced to a different approach. So if we as individuals, human individuals, are trying to resolve our own internal problems, like, so in my, in my case, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, boredom, these things I need to get rid of in order to be okay. Now that mechanism of trying to get rid of something I don't like in order to be okay on an individual level is no different from a country dropping bombs on another country in order to feel safe and secure. It's the same mechanism. And that's why we keep doing it over and over and over again. We, this country, don't like the way this country is doing something so we will invade or we will impose economic sanctions. And you can see it everywhere, you know. So the important thing is, and the invitation in this training and the great power of this training is to, is to just, you know, just for the next few days, what happens when you're walking around here and India is such a beautiful place for un unexpected noises and sounds and smells and people, you know, I, I just remember my Ayurvedic doctor in Rishikesh had, have an appointment at 2 p.m., turn up, everything's locked. He doesn't turn up till 4.30. There's no problem. It's like, you know, and I'm like beside myself with, with anger and how he's, it's such an insult and how could he be, you know, I hate India, it's always like this. And, and so this would be an example of the conventional approach to problems. A whole world of descriptions opens up of dislike, of resentment, and memories of fears. You know, and before long you're just lost in anger, and that's how you relate to people through this anger. So, at any point in that mechanism, you've now been introduced to open intelligence, and it's the anger itself that reminds you to just stop and recognize open intelligence. Just for a short moment, you don't have to keep it in place. It's just the most incredible thing and essentially we make up our suffering. The only reason we, we think we suffer is because we think we suffer. We've trained ourselves in suffering. So if you really think that your depression is something, so again I share from my own experience, I certainly did think it was something. It was the blackest, loneliest, horrific, scary experience to have. And I tried to get rid of it. I tried drugs, I tried psychiatrists, psychologists. And it was only until I came to this training and I was given the practical support. Firstly, of course, of the practice of short moments. Now, some of you probably don't understand a single thing about that. I, I didn't in the beginning. I said, what are they talking about? I don't understand what a short moment is. But that's fine. The other supports of the training we have a fantastic website where there are talks, free talks and free books that you're, you're welcome to download. We, we can uh, upload them to your device. Um, for, it's all for free. If you listen to these things, these talks, if you read these books, you will start to recognize and elicit the experience of open intelligence. And why would you want to do that, you might be asking. Well, practically speaking, like I said at the beginning, all I recognize now is love and connection, openness and potential in and as everything, especially Donald Trump. The worse things get, the more obvious the recognition of open intelligence gets. It's just the most incredible practice. And so, like you heard, we have an introductory training that you're welcome to test in your experience. But if you're lucky and you're open, and I, I'm the least open person conventionally, but somehow I'm, I'm open to this training because I just turned up and it just, it just happened by itself. I just started to feel more and more relaxed, more open. The, the depression that I'd had my entire life, it just didn't, it just had less and less power. And now I see really clearly that what I'd labeled depression is empty of an independent nature. It is the vast expanse of open intelligence. And if you think your, your data is real, you can really, just, just with this practice, 
when, when, when things come up that you really like or you really don't like, you can test it in your experience. What happens if I just recognize open intelligence with this? Again, just for a brief moment. And then you, you, you might even start to laugh at the futility of even thinking that these things could possibly have any power. Now it's like, um, now I always use this example, so apologies, because this has probably been on many talks, but if you think of an orange, a bright, a bright orange, maybe with a couple of green leaves, have you got it in your head? Only think about that orange. Any of you have any other thoughts come in just now, or sensations? Or can you keep the orange in place? Because I can't. But anyway, think about your orange. Now, why can't you take that orange out of your head and press it and make a delicious, refreshing <laughs> orange juice? Why, why can't you do it? If you go and see a psychologist or psychiatrist and talk about your parents, um, you know, and how they treated you as a child, you might be able to make orange juice out of your, out of your imaginary orange, but it might take a few years. It, I mean, we're all laughing, but why is that orange not real and my depression real? Why? There's no difference. There is no difference between those two things. And the only reason we believe in, in these things is because of repetition over and over again. I am Adrian. I am miserable. This person in the white coat tells, tells, tells me I'm miserable and I'm miserable because of the way my parents treated me as a child. And I try and sort all of this out, you know, by thinking about it and discussing it. But then what, what do I find? Not only do I have this life where my parents didn't treat me as well as they should, but I had thousands of other lives. <laughs> they need sorting out too. And before you know it, you're in an ocean of shit <laughs> right at the bottom and you're not getting out of it. You're not getting out of it. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an awful place to be in because I have been there. You will never find what you're looking for by trying to rearrange thoughts, emotions and sensations. You know that. And, and, and the very subtle trap that you, you might have fallen into, because I did, is if you're embarked on a spiritual practice, if you're still trying to change something about yourself through your practice, then that's exactly the same trap. What you want is a training that reveals to you perfection in and as everything. Even the things that you really detest about the world. Once you start to recognize these two as inseparable from perfection, then you have the solution to actually do something about them. Because if we're only changing things on blaming, judging and criticizing, which is essentially what is happening in the world, and I'm not saying there aren't some amazing organizations and people who are doing wonderful things conventionally but really if the if these approaches worked we would have eradicated some of the problems that humanity faces but clearly they don't we still have war we still have famine we still have inequality and like I said before it's very very important to recognize in your experience that everything about you is evidence of your empowerment and perfection and this training will do that for you. See, we only share our own experience and I want to shake you all by the shoulders and force you to do these trainings. But obviously that isn't such a good marketing tool. I learned, I learned that in the beginning. I had I, I, I'd basically been seeking for 20 years, like I said, which I know isn't a long time. And I came back to England and all my friends who were you know, all into meditation and yoga and all of these beautiful practices, and I said, I found it, I found it, you've got to do this thing, you go, no, no, 12 empowerments, 12 empowerments, the introductory training, no, 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 it's so amazing, it's so amazing. And uh, not one of my friends did even checked anything out because of my enthusiasm. But now what's happened is, through my example of relying on this training, I have changed from being a really, really cynical, sarcastic, bitter, argumentative, very unhelpful person um, to being quite a nice person and uh, you know I helped my father the first time I asked my father would you like me to mow the, the lawn for you he nearly had a heart attack <laughs> you know I, I was convinced my parents had me to be their slave now like I said I'm quite old so in the 70s we um, 
had, there were no remote controls for TVs unless you were very rich. I was the remote control for my parents. <laughs> Adrian, turn the cello over. Yeah, why do I have to do it? <laughs> you know. And it's, I can't tell you what a gift this training is. It's changed me, my relationship with my parents. That alone has made it worth it. You know, from being one of just total annoyance to just total love and honouring. You know, it brings me to tears. It's just the way I was before this training, towards my father in particular, and the way I am now, it's like there's no comparison. And so, yeah, the practice is just showing up. So if you have time, you come back to the open meetings. Like I said, uh, there, there's free videos and audio that you, you can download or you could just simply visit the website. Have them in your little uh, MP3 player. And if you just listen to them as you go about your day, you will start to elicit more and more openness, more and more spaciousness more and more wonder. It's like being in a wonderland. I can't believe how I used to describe my experience. Now everything's the same. I still have all of the, exactly the same sensations I had before. It, they're worse probably. Definitely the physical things. And yet I feel more and more in love, baby. <laughs> uh, we're in the land of hippies so I thought I'd I behave. When in Rome. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, just it's such an important question about benefiting conventionally. You know, there's so many things going on. So it's important, if you want to, test in your experience how does your own recognition of open intelligence affect those immediately around you right now? You know, when you're, when you're interacting in the, in the chai shops, when you go to have some food and it, it comes an hour late. You know, when you're waiting and waiting and waiting. What, how, how is it to just let that be as it is and use that, all that negativity to bring your focus back to open intelligence? Just test it.